Hi and welcome back. So a new study out of the University of Cambridge has shown that researchers have devised a way to accurately and constantly measure your VO2 max without needing to visit a fitness lab. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and see what this new study has got to offer. This is the review of a piece I read that was penned by the University of Cambridge in the UK and published in the journal Digital Medicine, which describes how Cambridge researchers have developed a method for measuring a person's overall fitness accurately on a wearable device without the wearer needing to actually exercise. And there are links in the description below to the study and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Normally, Tests to accurately measure VO2 max, a key measurement of overall fitness and an important predictor of heart disease and mortality risk, require expensive laboratory equipment and are mostly limited to elite athletes. This new method uses machine learning to predict VO2 max, the capacity of the body to carry out aerobic work during everyday activities without the need for contextual information such as GPS measurements. In what is by far the largest study of its kind, the research has gathered activity data from more than 11,000 participants in the Fenland study using wearable sensors, with a subset of those participants tested again seven years later. The researchers used data to develop a model to predict VO2 max, which was then validated against a third group who carried out standard lab-based exercise testing. The new model showed a high degree of accuracy compared to the lab-based testing and outperformed other approaches. Some smartwatches and fitness monitors currently on the market claim to provide an estimate of VO2 max, but since the algorithms powering these predictions aren't published and are subject to change at any time, it's unclear whether the predictions are accurate or whether an exercise regime is having any effect on an individual's VO2 max over time. The Cambridge developed model is more robust, transparent, and provides accurate predictions based on heart rate and accelerometer data only. Since the model can also detect fitness changes over time, it may also be useful in estimating fitness levels for entire populations and identifying the effects of lifestyle trends on longevity. The measurement of VO2 max is considered the gold standard of fitness testing. Professional athletes, for example, test their VO2 max by measuring their oxygen consumption while they exercise to the point of exhaustion. There are other ways of measuring fitness in the laboratory, but these require specialized equipment. Additionally, strenuous exercise can be a considerable risk to some individuals. Dr. Soren Braj of Cambridge University's MRC Epidemiological Unit and co-author of the study said, VO2 max isn't the only measurement of fitness, but it's an important one for endurance and a strong predictor of diabetes, heart disease and other mortality risks. However, since most VO2 max tests are done on people who are reasonably fit, it's hard to get measurements for those who are not as fit and might be at risk of cardiovascular disease. Dr. Demetrius Spathis from Cambridge University's Department of Computer Science and Technology and co-lead author said, We wanted to know whether it was possible to accurately predict VO2 max using data from a wearable device so that there would be no need for an exercise test. Our central question was whether wearable devices can measure fitness in the wild. Most wearables provide metrics like heart rate, steps or sleeping time, which are proxies for health, but aren't directly linked to health outcomes. This was a collaborative study between two departments at Cambridge University. The team from the MRC Epidemiological Unit provided expertise in population health, cardiorespiratory fitness, and they provided data from the Fenland study. This is a long running public health study being conducted in the east of England and the team from the Department of Computer Sciences and Technology who provided expertise in machine learning and artificial intelligence for mobile and wearable data.
Dr. Spathis, joint co-author, said, we had to design an algorithm pipeline and appropriate models that could compress this huge amount of data and use it to make an accurate prediction. The free living nature of this data makes this prediction challenging because we're trying to predict a high level outcome, fitness, with noisy, low level data, wearable sensors. Let's now take a look at how the participants were grouped. Participants in the study wore wearable devices continuously for six days. The sensors gathered 60 values per second, resulting in 31,104,000 pieces of separate data that all needed to be processed. The baseline data from 11,059 participants in the Fenland study was compared with follow-up data from seven years later, taken from a subset of 2,675 of the original participants. A third group of 181 participants from the UK Biobank validation study underwent lab-based VO2 max testing to validate the accuracy of the algorithm. Let's now take a look at the results. The machine learning model had a strong agreement with the measured VO2 max scores at both baseline with an 82% agreement and with the follow-up testing and that had a 72% agreement. Dr. Braj, co-author of the study, noted that it's true in principle that many fitness monitors and smartwatches provide a measurement of VO2 max, but it's very difficult to assess the validity of those claims. The models aren't usually published and the algorithms can change on a regular basis, making it difficult for people to determine if the fitness has actually improved or if it's just been estimated by a different algorithm. The researchers went on to say their results demonstrate how wearables can accurately measure fitness, but transparency needs to be improved if measurements from commercially available wearables are to be trusted. Dr. Spathis stated, everything on your smartwatch related to health and fitness is an estimate. We're transparent about our modeling and we did it at scale. We show that we can achieve better results with a combination of noisy data and traditional biomarkers. Also, all of our algorithms and models are open sourced and everyone can use them. Professor Cecilia Mascalo from the Department of Computer Science and Technology, who was also the senior author of the study said, we've shown that you don't need an expensive test in a lab to get a real measurement of fitness. The wearables we use every day can be just as powerful if they have the right algorithm behind them. Cardio fitness is such an important health marker, but until now, we didn't have the means to measure it at scale. These findings could have significant implications for population health policies, so we can move beyond weaker health proxies such as the body mass index or BMI as we know it. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. I have to agree with the last comment uh, made by the researcher, which said the sooner the better when it comes to technology taking over from outdated metrics such as the BMI. For me, that, that kind of technology can't come quick enough. Um, also, the point about all devices being an estimate, even if you sprung for the order ring, $300 to buy, and then now $6 a month um, for membership to keep getting all of the information that you want, is just an estimate. How accurate the order ring is, again, say perhaps the Mi Band 6, I would recommend you visit the YouTube channel, The Quantified Scientist. He tests all the fitness bands against his performance in a sleep laboratory and also in uh, an exercise laboratory too. I'm not sure about the next step for this. I've tried to find the open source algorithm. I can't find it. What would be nice is if Cambridge University or an aspiring entrepreneur were to produce an app, much like the app I use with my Mi Band, although this is a Mi Band, I've got the Zep app. And once I open it, automatically pairs with this, uploads the information and I can see it on my phone. That would be great if we could get a more accurate measurement of our VO2 max throughout the day, regardless or not of whether we're in obviously an exercise lab, which most people are not going to go into just to find the VO2 max, but an accurate measurement, not the estimate that most devices give us now. Let me know in the comments below. Do you monitor your VO2 max as well as your aerobic and anaerobic um, exercise brackets? And also let me know which monitor you use. And do you think it's accurate 100% or what do you think? How accurate do you think 
your particular fitness monitor is.